I wanted to take some time to talk about Callaway Topgolf, which is a company that I've actually had my eye on for quite a while. I'm going to talk through some of their latest investor materials, but if any of you have any opinions or thoughts about the company, I'd also love if you guys commented below, share your thoughts as well. Um, if I missed anything major that you think is major or overlooked anything, would love to hear it um, because this is a, a company that I've I've been considering investing in. As a quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor by any means, and I've never owned and currently do not own Topgolf Callaway shares. Before diving into it, the company is trading at about 20 bucks a share, um, and I believe their diluted share count is around 200 million. So they're trading at about a $4 billion valuation. Um, it's been a bit of a wild ride for this stock if you take a look at the chart. They're trading in the mid to high teens um, before they merged with Top Golf at the beginning of 2021, uh, and the company immediately went down to about $15. Once the stock market started rallying, reopening plays emerged, uh, the stock actually traded up all the way into the low to mid 30s, uh, so essentially doubled up. Uh, but with the stock market falling back down here with higher interest rates, you've seen it go all the way back down to the price it was essentially pre-merger with Topgolf. So lots of fluctuations, lots of movement in this stock. Going into some of their investment material, um, they're really just starting off here with a demographic. So it seems like they're commenting on how they're modernizing the game of golf and they have a more diverse group of customers, younger, more ethnicities, more females um, than conventional golf has had in the past. On the right hand side, they actually have some pretty interesting business highlights uh, which are definitely notable uh, as we look at the investment thesis. Number two golf ball brand, number one golf equipment brand. And in terms of their top golf business, um, they, they share the fact that only 50% of their customers are on course golfers. Um, so looks like they're bringing a lot new of new people into the sport of golf through this more like casual um, platform. So I'd say on the right hand side, those are all pretty strong sound bites. So so far, I'm I'm interested in digging in a bit deeper here, learning a bit more about the company um, based off of their presentations. So the slide here, I'm just digesting it. Is it, I feel like it's a bit misleading. Um, they're obviously showing strong growth, but they've had a ton of acquisitions, uh, both on their active lifestyle segment of their business and then like more dramatically with with the top golf merger so um of course they're going to have strong average net revenue and and EBITDA gr growth but um i'm kind of taking this with a grain of salt so this is actually a pretty interesting slide showing how well they've diversified their business over the last five years and that continued diversification uh, going into the next five years. Um, interesting um, how they actually have active lifestyle, it looks like, in terms of growing share of the pie. Top Golf, which is the obvious one, um, isn't surprising at all. Uh, but I'm surprised to see active lifestyle actually uh, increasing share of pie and how dramatically they are projecting golf equipment to drop as size of the pie. So from their numbers, I don't think they're expecting a decline necessarily in golf equipment, but it looks like just the growth of top golf and, and lifestyle brands is just projected to outpace it to a pretty extreme extent, which is interesting. Okay. So here we have um, annual growth targets. Uh, interesting to see that they're expecting double digit revenue growth. Um, but their EBITDA, which we'll use as a proxy for cash flow at this point, um, is growing slightly higher than that. 
not surprising in terms of the the EBITDA growing ahead as they you know get some operating leverage um, on, on the Top Golf platform and, and scale their other businesses internationally. Um, but I am a bit surprised to see how how strong the overall uh, forecast is on net revenue growth, especially for such a long time period here. This is a essentially a four-year span that they're forecasting for. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, we'll dive into that a bit later to see exactly how they're going to do that. But it seems like it's predominantly driven by top golf growth uh, at close to 20%. Um, and, and they're expecting that to be close to half their business. So that's where lots of their expected growth is coming from and expected EBITDA growth as well. If you look at just the margin expansion that they're expecting on Top Golf versus the rest of their business, which is probably a bit more developed, so less upside. Overall, I think this is is once again pretty promising. Um, you know, some some potential shades of doubt on if they'd be able to actually deliver this, depending on um, macroeconomic factors um, and stuff like that. But overall, I'd say this is a pretty bullish forecast. So this is just kind of highlighting um, where they see the growth being fueled by. Honestly, this is all pretty um, <laughs> generic. Uh, I feel like except the last point they make here on focus on cross-segment synergies, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, whether that's, you know, selling People first getting into the game of golf on the Callaway brand at their top golf top golf locations, um, selling Callaway merchandise at Top Golf, um, whatever it may be. I think they definitely have an opportunity to synergize the two sides of the business a lot more since it's pretty fresh. Um, the the other sides here are just pretty generic, continued investment, digital innovation, operational excellence. Um, so the slide isn't telling me too much. Um, macro trends. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is something that um, they talk a lot about uh, on, I, I listened to one of their earnings calls, uh, just about, you know, trends in active lifestyle, people wanting to be outdoors. Um, apparently, they they are very, very bullish on people having like hybrid uh work opportunities that they don't have to go into the office every day. That's driving more golf. I, I don't put too much behind that. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of just like a fruity slide that's saying they're well positioned from a, from a trend perspective. A couple more um, just category level uh, trends here that they want to highlight. It's interesting. One, one, one of the main things they highlight here is 73% um, of people are like swaying more towards nine hole rounds of golf. So I get how that's beneficial for like top golf because it's kind of showing how people don't want to spend five hours on a golf course. They'd rather something um, a bit more time efficient, more casual. Um, so I can see how that is beneficial to top golf, but that may also have negative repercussions for their core business, less golf balls getting lost, less equipment needed if people are playing less golf. Um, so that, that's an, an interesting soundbite there. Uh, going over to the right-hand side of the slide, um, interesting to see 75% non-golfers who visited a Top Golf are now interested in playing on a course. So that's kind of showing how they can get people into the sport and really expand uh, expand the sport, which obviously directly helps their business. Okay, diving more into the top golf side of things, which honestly I think is the the more strategically important side of the business. Um, the golf equipment, golf ball, active lifestyle. While opportunities there, it's probably acting as more of the cash cow for the business um, to enable lots of the growth and lots of the investment they want to make in Top Golf, which is really where they can really scale this business. So that's where I want to focus a lot on. They're opening a, about a venue a month, 
which is pretty good seeing as I believe they currently have 80 venues. I think last year they had 70 venues. So about a venue a month is, is their run rate of openings. And on top of that, they have been growing same venue store or same venue sales rather, um, which is good, especially with, with inflation and operating costs going up. It's great to be able to offset that by having uh, same venue sales growth. If anything, I'd expect and, and want more than low single digit growth on, on that front. Um, top tracer, uh, I believe, is the technology that they put in the top in the golf balls to see how far they, they're traveling and where they're going. They license that technology to uh, driving ranges around the world. Um, they don't talk that in, too much in terms of what size of the whole Top Golf um, segment that is, but I think that's a really interesting opportunity. Super scalable, um, very low capital investment needed to license that type of technology. So not exactly sure how big of an opportunity that is, but at surface level, I think it's also interesting. Top Golf Media, I don't really put anything behind. I'm not really sure what they're doing there. I can almost guarantee it's not, at least today, um, a significant piece of revenue or expected profit over the next handful of years. So I really like this slide here, just showing the consistent sequential growth of, of their venues. 80 venues across the world, primarily in the US, is still not that much. Um, I feel like a business model like this, uh, they, they can really blow up this number over the next five, 10 years. And I know they're starting to open some some licensed top golfs around the world as well. So um, this is an area that I'm really excited about. I think opening essentially a top golf a month, primarily in the U.S. and then eventually internationally, will be the biggest growth driver for this business. And the fact that they're seeing 40 to 50 percent cash on cash returns uh, is fantastic. That's a great allocation of shareholder dollars to go into um, 40 to 50% return on investments um, and can really help this scale faster as they get start getting that money that they're investing back in. They can continue to invest in more and more locations. This is just kind of breaking down that 40 to 50%. So high level cost, cost about seven and a half million dollars after financing to build a Top Golf, uh, I, they don't own the the space, so um, that's just to build it out, not necessarily to buy any land or anything. Um, revenue is about seventeen million, uh, and at the end of the day, cash flow is about twenty percent margins. So about three and a half million dollars costs about seven and a half million dollars to build out. So after give or take two years, they're paid back on a cash basis, which is fantastic. Moving into the golf equipment side. So the company overall does about $4 billion in revenue. Um, golf equipment is about 1.2 billion of that. So about 30% of the revenue of the business um, based off of their expected revenue mix over time. Probably the the least bullish forecast or the least focus on this segment of the business, but still a good chunk of the business today. So worth understanding a bit more. Um, I do like to see that this part of the business is a bit more uh, geographically diversified than uh, at least Top Golf. So 15% coming out of Europe, 20% Asia, 65% Americas, which is probably broader than just the U.S. Um, so we get some geographical diversification here of about four to five hundred million dollars of revenue, probably, which is which is nice to see. About ten percent of the overall company's revenue coming from outside the U.S. Um, just from this segment, and then I also like their their the diversification of their sales channel. So they have twenty percent of their uh, golf equipment going direct to consumer. Uh, they also are across all kinds of mass retail, sporting goods, specialty retail stores. Um, so it's not necessarily one channel that can have a significant impact on their business in, in any given year. 
Okay, moving on to active lifestyle. So on active lifestyle, um, they kind of split this up into like golf related brands and then active lifestyle brands that are non-golf related. Uh, so within golf related, uh, obviously Call- Callaway is their, their bread and butter. It was kind of the, the core of the company prior to a bunch of their acquisitions. And then I'm going to say this wrong, but Ogio um, seems like that's a, another golf accessory brand that they acquired uh, about five years ago, uh, which they, they plug in here as well. I think they're a bit more bullish on the active lifestyle side of the business. So Travis Matthews, Jack Wolfskin, both acquired in the last five years. So you can kind of see how um, this has really been a growth by acquisition story um, on all elements of the business except for Callaway. Um, they say they expect revenue this year to be about a billion dollars. So about a quarter of the business. Uh, but this seems to be an area where they think they have a lot of opportunity uh, internationally to really drive a lot of growth here. So this is probably a bit more of a focus than the golf equipment business. Um, yeah, I, I, I think both on the golf equipment and active lifestyle, uh, they're providing a lot of cash to the business. Uh, seems like there's a, a bit of an interesting story here on the internationalization of it. But I think overall, people that are looking to invest in this company are really doing it based off of their projection of growth or failure on the top golf business, because that's where all the money's funneling into in terms of investment and future opportunity. Okay, uh, capital allocation strategy. So this is interesting to see, you know, where the management team is is focusing on on redeploying. Uh, the company's cash and and their cash flows as as they're getting them in. So the first thing is reinvest in the business to unlock high ROI growth. Um, I think this makes a ton of sense given the type of company this is, the opportunities they have in front of them. Obviously, those 40 to 50 percent cash on cash returns on Top Golf are a good investment choice. Uh, looks like they think they have room to expand Travis Matthews stores internationally as well. Um, they didn't really break that down for us as much, but I imagine that also has a high ROI. Uh, the next part here is maintaining a healthy balance sheet. Um, yeah, I, I think this company um, should definitely work on on lowering their, their net debt. Uh, so I, I agree with that being a priority. Um, opportunistically exploring investments in complementary areas. I don't really know what they're talking about here. Like it doesn't necessarily sound like they're talking about M and A. Um, perhaps investing in incremental areas of growth within their existing business. Um, I'm not really sure about this one. Um, I think they have a lot of opportunity on on one, and whatever is left over after one should probably be going into two. So I I don't exactly I'm not exactly excited about you know trying to find additional opportunities right now. They have probably more than they can chew on their plate already. And then lastly, returning capital to shareholders through buybacks. Um, I typically prefer companies who pay dividends or, or do buybacks to return capital to shareholders. This is an example that they, they, once again, I think there's a lot of opportunity on one and a lot that needs to be done on the net debt here. So I'd be fine with with them not returning capital at this point until they get the business in, in better operating shape. Okay, so let's just go through why they think this is a compelling investment opportunity, and I'll kind of give my thoughts on each of these. Proven, um, yeah, I'd say all their business lines have been proven to, to be able to grow, be able to grow profitably, have strong cash on cash returns, be cash flow machines. So I would say that they are a proven company. They play in proven segments. Scaled, unmatched global reach in modern golf. You know, I'm not sure I'd I'd give them a check mark there yet. Uh, Top Golf is still very US centric. And at the end of the day, that's where this company's going. Um, they have some international and, and global presence on their other segments but it looks like they're still working on building those out as well. So I think they're getting there, but I, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't necessarily say they're the most, or they may be the most global golf brand or business, but overall, I wouldn't say they're overly global. Uh, diversified. They are diversified across, um, you know, entertainment, conventional golf, uh, active lifestyle, but the, the knock I'll, I'll give them on their diversification is every element of their business is, is fairly discretionary in nature. So that concerns me a bit if there was a macro event or consumer pullback in spending, I think they'd get hit across the board, um, which is one of the reasons I think um, th this company may be trading where it is given its growth opportunities. Protected high barriers to entry. Yeah, I think they have some some high barriers to entry throughout their, their segments. Um, so I'll give them that. Growth oriented, I'll also give them that just by going through the presentation, listening to one of their earnings calls, it seems pretty, um, pretty clear that they're focused on growth. They're positioning the company for growth. Um, so I'll give them that as well. So overall, pretty good. I'll give them proven, uh, protected, growth oriented, scaled, not going to give them that yet. Diversified, sure, but still all within discretionary segments. This is just them talking about um, synergies and, and how they're going to realize synergies. So on the revenue side, um, incremental retail opportunities at top golf venues, I think that should be a bit of a help. Um, also, um, on the on the cost side, just leveraging the corporate functions of Callaway just to drive efficiencies there and also like centralized um, sourcing of clubs, balls, um, non-food related inventory at warehouses. This stuff all just like makes sense and, and it'll get realized with time as they better roll in these two companies together. So looks like I'm just trying to get a sense for, they think it's going to be about a hundred million in, in cash flow. So yeah, that's that's not a bad size of incremental cash flow by 2025. Going over uh, their financials briefly, um, so this year they're expected to do about four billion in revenue, 550 million, let's call it, in in EBITDA. So they're trading about you know one x revenue, eight x. EBITDA or cash flow, um, so not too expensive of a of a stock necessarily, just from a multiple standpoint. Um, as we look at 2023, they're expected to grow 10% despite FX headwinds. So we're talking like four and a half billion, um, and it looks like they're expecting to have about 600 million in adjusted EBITDA. So they're going to be trading. Um, is that closer to seven, seven times, I, I suppose, uh, next year's cash flow, seven to eight, uh, and there will be under a one revenue multiple next year. So not very expensive just based off of uh, an EBITDA and a net revenue multiple. On EPS, they have a lot of CapEx going on based off of how much they're investing and in expanding Top golf and, and stuff like that. So their earnings picture um, is a bit uh, d diluted because of that. Um, still probably trading about 20 times earnings, um, even with all those investments going in. What, what I do like is that they are consistently profitable. So looks like now quarter over quarter, they're making 20, 25 cents per share. Um, so this isn't a company that's burning money that needs to raise more money, anything like that. They're actually improving their financial situation quarter over quarter um, over the last few years, which which I like to see. So about a dollar of EPS uh, is the, the high side estimate for this year. It's about the same for next year. Um, so nice to see that it's positive. But at the end of the day, it's so much CapEx going on here um, that I'm really looking at, at the EBITDA and the free cash flow and the revenue growth for now. Um, this should eventually flow through into, you know, higher EPS 
as that capex rolls down uh, once Top Golf is is uh, built out a bit more. Okay, just going through the income statement here. Um, yeah, I I think this needs to be taken with a grain of salt. This growth rate because not all of the Top Golf revenue from twenty one is in there, given the timing of the acquisition. Um, but other than that, looks like their margins from like net margin to net revenue, you know, a bit, a bit lower than I'd like to see, but there's lots of investments, one-time investments, venue pre-opening costs, $20 million that would just flow to the bottom line, um, stuff like that in here, um, that I think they, they could easily get to, you know, around a 10% net income margin, uh, which on four to $5 billion in, in revenue, once things normalize would be, you know, 400, $500 million of, of net income on a stock that's trading at a $4 billion valuation. So definitely not a, a bad valuation by any means. Okay. The, the balance sheet here, you start to see some of the reasons why this stock may be trading where it is, um, cash on hand, couple hundred million dollars account receivable. So they have like one to one five billion in, in total current assets. Um, they have some property plant equipment. Sure. Uh, Goodwill, this is all just top golf. So I immediately would take that out of, you know, total assets. Uh, so total assets, let's call it, you know, four to five billion. On the liability side, I don't really count uh, operating leases. This is just commitments to leases, so that shouldn't really count. That's part of their like monthly operations. I don't like how they roll those in. Um, but give or take about a billion in current liabilities, a billion in, in long-term debt, uh, so $2 billion dollars. Um, on a market cap that's four billion, and at a company that's doing about four hundred million in in EBITDA, so th their their debt is higher than I'd want it to be, especially in this environment where there's a lot of upside risk to interest rates, and as they have to re up their their financing obligations, um, I, I think after investing in the business, that's their should be their main priority to to pay down, and I think if they do, they'll probably start to get a bit of a better multiple. Okay, so my overall thoughts on on this name. Um, let's start with the pros. I think the Top Golf expansion opportunity um, at the level of cash on cash returns is the most exciting part of this business. Uh, in addition to the same venue sales growth potential for Top Golf, um, so I think if you're investing in this company, you're really bullish on on Top Golf. Um, I like how their other segments of the business seem to still be doing pretty well, uh, which is providing the cash flow that's needed to really fuel that top golf expansion without going into debt farther or diluting shareholders um, even more. Uh, so I think that's a really good uh, relationship between the two, um, leveraging the current cash flows right now to really build out top golf, which could be a machine in the future. And then lastly, I, I really like how this has consistently been a profitable business despite all the puts and calls, mergers, one-time costs, CapEx going on. Um, I think that that's really impressive that they've been able to manage um, to be profitable throughout it all. And I think it it bodes well for the management team, how they manage the business and, and what the future holds, given that technically this should just get better as Topgolf scales out and becomes more profitable. On the negative side, I think this is a very discretionary business holistically. And it can be significantly impacted behind a weaker consumer, weaker economic climate. So that does concern me a bit. It's, I, I could see things that this company has no control over that can make this stock potentially go down pretty dramatically, especially with their debt load. Um, which leads me into the second point, which is high debt load for the amount of free cash flow and, and the market cap of this company. Um, so that is something that I am worried about. Um, in making a big investment in, in a company like this. 
And then lastly, uh, while I want them to invest in, you know, top golf, expanding Travis Matthews, paying down debt, when it's all said and done, this company doesn't pay a dividend, no line of sight to paying a dividend. And it probably wouldn't be the right decision to be buying back shares. So they don't have a strong ability to really return capital to shareholders over the next few years. You're really counting on the business growth, the profit growth, the revenue growth um, in order to generate value uh, on capital appreciation here. So I think overall, um, as I look at all the factors, um, th this is a company that I'm definitely going to keep on my watch list. I think the the combination of the level of discretionaryness of the business paired with their current high debt levels um, is is kind of stopping me from diving in. Um, but I do think it has a lot of opportunity. I could see if you know the economic landscape doesn't go down too badly, and this company continues to execute, how this could be a thirty to forty dollars stock in a hand in like a couple years, twenty twenty five. Um, so definitely one I'm going to keep watching. If it continues to dip and gets into, you know, the mid teens, mid to high teens, $16, $17, I may take a small flyer on it. Won't be a big part of my portfolio, but maybe worth a, like a, a long-term bet on. But at these prices, while attractive, if you really believe in those growth rates and the story, um, I, I also can see how th there's some some downside risk from here on a macro level. So I'm going to stay on the sidelines for now, but I'm going to keep a close look on it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Top Golf Callaway. If you guys are invested in it, if you guys disagree with um, some of the sentiment that I've expressed here is my opinion. And also, if you guys like the video, you guys want more videos like this on different stocks, um, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. Um, I'll look to put a couple more of these out as well.